Hey, what's up, everyone? <laughs> My name is Giovanni Valderas. I am the exhibitions manager at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. And today we are so blessed to have Peter Harrington. He is currently showing with us at the Frost Gallery at the, at the Arts Center. His show is called Arrow Cactus. It's up from April 16th through May 22nd. Peter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, first of all, let me just say thank you guys so much for the beautiful job you did hanging the show. Um, wow, uh, so it was, anyway, I just wanna invite everybody to come out and take a look at this show. Um, you know, as an artist, when you have a hanging of your paintings, a new expression gets created, like it kind of almost like an entity of its own. And um, you, you must know that too, Giovanni, from your you know, personal experience, um, how special it is when you have a show hung and when it's hung very well, as you guys did. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It, it was a pleasure hanging yeah. the show. And, and that's so right. You know, the, the show or the paintings take on new meanings when, when yes. they're curated in different ways. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So um, I understand that you want to talk about a few of my paintings and then maybe, I don't know, talk about things in general. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. We can jump right yeah. into the paintings. Sure, so, sure. You know, for me, when I think about the work, and I can definitely see the influence by like the Chicago images. Uh, yes. And so I was wondering if you can kind of expand on that relationship and, and kind of what made you gravitate towards that and when it started. Well, years ago, maybe in the 80s, I was living near Chicago and um, started to look at the paintings of Roger Brown who was one of the image, imagists. And um, they're beautifully crafted, um, beautifully resolved paintings. Um, these, many of these imagists were inspired by the um, folk artists of the South. And they started to create a genre of art that was, um, had a folk, folky kind of quality, had an almost comic book quality, but yet the resolved pieces, these paintings and sculptures were so beautifully done. And, um, Anyway, Roger Brown was one of my, uh, probably one of my big influences. I used to make pilgrimages to Chicago to see his work. You know, speaking of, of your work, and there, there is, for me, something really interesting that, that happens, and I, and I was wondering, wondering if I can get your thoughts on that, is, you Thank know, you. When, you're, when you talk about, like, the state of your work and how it intersects with elements from primitive nature and, and the human presence, I automatically gravitate towards the, the painting uh, named Arrow Cactus and, and how there's a, a plane and, and then there's the, the uh, imagery of the cactus that kind of simulates that or, and I, I think yeah. about dualities intersecting. And I, I was wondering if you can kind of expand on that. Yeah, um, I was walking up the road one evening and saw the silhouettes of Choya cactuses. And they almost looked like a, a gathering of airplanes to me. And since then, I've done a number of paintings that combine airplanes with cactuses. The arrow cactus painting that you're thinking of is this strange um, totem-like painting in which there's this cactus with these perfect arms that go upwards towards an airplane and the airplane wings become also like cactus arms. The whole thing becomes a totem-like painting mm -hmm. um, with those elements coming together so that you you kind of almost lose the sense of the representation of things and it becomes this abstract thing, you know. Um, right, right. Anyway, when I was younger, I just fell in love with um, totem art, you know, of the Northwest Indians and African totem art. And I just felt sad that I, uh, you know, couldn't make my own totem, totem art because I didn't belong to those cultures. But um, years later, I began to make um, paintings which have a totem quality to them of my own. So it's really, really fun. It's interesting when I look at the body of work and, and I see like a lot of like symbolism for like transportation, but for me, I think about growth and, and going from one destination to the other, you know, in, in life and learning what that means. And I was wondering, is, is that a theme that, 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 in, that is inherently in the work and what are your thoughts behind that? Wow, I've never quite thought about it that way, but now that you mention it, I guess it probably is um, true that uh, many of my pieces have a feeling of ascension to them, you know, and uh, what you say is very true. 
and um, yes, I, I think that that is so true um, with my work. Yeah, extensions is a lot better word to describe your pieces instead <laughs> of the way I just did. But yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> You're so gracious. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think for me, one of the most beautiful pieces and, and the one of the works I'm, I'm attracted to the most is called the Church of Twenty Nine Palms, and it's very. Um, very interesting in the sense that it, there's like this soothing color palette and it's very hypnotic and almost carries a, like a meditative experience or a spirit with it. Yes. Um, I think if you asked a child to, to do a drawing of the Church of 29 Palms, they might come up with something like this. Um, there's a little town in California called 29 Palms and the name of the town itself just um, uh, uh, seemed magical to me. And so um, many of my ideas just come to me out of the blue. And this was one of those ideas that just came to me. Um, and so it's, it's of this palm frond, which has 29 leaves to it. And on the end of each leaf is a palm, you know? So it's, it, it creates this crazy quality to it. And the whole thing is hovering over a um, Southwest Catholic church. And I love these beautiful Southwest Adobe churches. And, and I involve them in some of my paintings. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I like to combine the forms of um, religious architecture, oftentimes with primitive um, plant forms um, in a kind of mysterious way. Once again, it kind of goes back to um, some of the imagist artists that, that created a, a spooky kind of humor. And people sometimes um, talk about my work in the same way. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. It's such a great, great insight. Um, you know, when I when we've talked previously, you you've mentioned the importance of finding this kind of time for like solitary retreats and and how much of that influences your work and how important is it to kind of have that moment? Well, um, I think it does a lot. You know, I don't I don't like to overtly talk about religious things, but but I guess it it just comes naturally to me. And, um, when I was in my 20s, I went off uh, for three times, I went off to the wilderness and I went to the mountains and did, um, you know, a, a solitary experience. Um, I would bring along rice, lentils, tahini, dried fruit for two or three, for one or two months. Wow. And um, I would not see a human being, you know. And uh, yes, these were very, very special, very wonderful experiences that... Um, that did influence my my art. Was it difficult in the beginning to let's say become acclimated to these these situations that you found yourself in, and did it get easier, or or was it easy from the start? Yes, thank you. Well, um, I lived in a few Zen Buddhist communities when I was younger for about five years, and so you learn a certain um, a certain retreat schedule that you carry with you when you do a, a um, solitary retreat in the wilderness. And so if you, if you just hold to that schedule, even though you're very lonely and sometimes your heart is breaking, you know, you just hold that schedule and um, follow it and, it. and it kind of carries you through the experience. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Uh, I think we all should make that time to go out <laughs> and sit with nature and experience it and, and sit in like peace and quiet and absorb all that. It's, the last one, the last one was in the Gila Mountains in New Mexico, and I was in a tent, and for I was there for exactly a month. And I, I remember the wind used to blow that tent, you know, and um, I did not see a human being for a month. And then exactly a month, at the end of a month, um, some hunters came and and parked there trailers they brought out horses and they brought out guns you know <laughs> so it was really kind of a, a quite an ending to that experience oh how funny yeah <laughs> and so i guess <laughs> this leads into the work called soma which i think is a really great work and i was wondering if you can Thank expand you. on that because it kind of touches you. on that experience you had right yeah that um soma painting is um related to that experience and and it to tell you the truth, I didn't even realize that until after I did the painting. It's so strange. Um, but yes, it, it, it has this little primitive hut, which 
transforms into this strange, um, this strange shape, which I can just call maybe transcend the transcendence, transcendental shape, you know. Um, and below the hut upon which it is standing is this black um, form. Sometimes I will involve a dark form on the bottom of my paintings. And, and to me, I think that has something to do with what um, Buddhists call your original nature or your true nature. Um, you know, when you, when you keep your mind before, uh, uh, without too much thinking going on, you, you keep your mind before thinking for a period of time and really focus, you start to experience a deeper quality of, of existence. Yeah. yeah. Well, Peter, uh, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, in what way can they do that? Do you have a website or are you on Instagram? Yes, thank you. Um, well, I'm represented by a wonderful gallery in Santa Fe called the Ellsworth Gallery. And you could just look up my work through the Ellsworth Gallery. Um, they're located about a couple of blocks from the Central Plaza in Santa Fe. Also, um, I have a website called um, Paintings by Peter Harrington. Nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and we forgot to say that you live in Santa Fe, which is amazing. Uh, well, I, or I, on the outskirts, right? Sorry. Well, I live about an hour and a half from Santa Fe. You know, we, my wife and I um, live in a little village called Hamas Springs. Um, and we have a, a small studio space together. She's a ceramic artist. And it's our, our studio is 12 by nine feet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm painting away there. And I'm usually painting every day, you know, yeah. but I'm, I'm painting away there. And, and Susan is over there on her pottery wheel. And I hear the beautiful sound of that wheel while I'm painting. There can be no greater pleasure than that. Oh, that is a life to live. I, I can't wait uh, to get there. So, yeah. <laughs> well, please, please come by. Please come by for a cup of tea. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, Peter, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And, and thank you for sharing so much beautiful insight about the work and, and about your experience. Thank you so much, Giovanni. And, and um, I really just want to thank um, the Fort Worth Community Arts Center so much for all of the work that you've been doing. I, you guys are heroes. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Well, everyone, come check out Peter Harrington's work, Arrow Cactus. It's up until May 22nd. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Peter. And Thank we'll you. See, yeah, and we'll see y'all soon. Okay, bye-bye. Hey,